Man, can you sense the expectation, the anticipation? Holy Spirit's hovering. Love the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Father, we just are so privileged to be a part of your family and a part of your royal household. We are so grateful for the, the ongoing gift of Jesus, that his grace is our continual equipping. His grace is our enabling. His grace teaches us to live a holy life. We are so grateful. And Holy Spirit, you are the power, the presence of God upon the earth. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of truth. You're the spirit of life. You are the spirit of intercession. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And we ask you to orchestrate each and every aspect of today, that you would orchestrate our lives. Holy Spirit, we surrender and yield to your orchestration. Nothing of us, nothing, no plans, just whatever it is that you desire, that God alone would get the glory, that the people would receive the good, and we would be enabled to move into destiny. Father God, we thank you that each and every one of us are complete in Christ. We are complete in Christ. And we thank you that we are an equipped ecclesia. We thank you that we not only are we complete, but we are enabled, that we are motivated, that we are mobilizing, that we are active. We are taking hold of destiny. We're moving into communities and nations and taking transformation power everywhere we go. We thank you, Father, that when we moved into your kingdom, you removed every limitation that we place upon ourselves. You remove every limitation in our mindsets. You remove every limitation. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and all the power. All the praise. Father, we ask that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand. And then, Father, that you would move us, motivate us by the Spirit to take hold of the revelation we get and apply it. That we would be people of application. And we thank you for that. Mike? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we submit to you. Father, we're ready. Father, we welcome your servant. We welcome your servant, Father. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just pray in the spirit for a while. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to do this later or now? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you. We give you glory. Come on. Let's prophesy. Thank you, Jesus. We prophesy that this nation comes alive. We prophesy, God that this nation comes alive. We prophesy over this nation, God, that revival fires will start to fall in this nation, God, not just in America, but God, all over globally, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. You can be seated. I see we've got some communion cups here. We're probably going to do communion when I'm done. I'd like to do that, or we'll have... Apostle Suzette do that because I really feel um, this is going to, I just personally feel communion in this season is going to seal a lot of the things that we've been waiting for God. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Uh, communion is not just to keep the dev devil at bay. Communion is to declare that Jesus is seated. Yeah. Amen. Come on. And so um, this morning or this afternoon, I, I want to speak to you about something that's really been on my heart. I was going out walking one day just a couple of weeks ago. And um, the Lord spoke very clearly to me. And he said, um, this is what he said. He said, ask the bride what is in her leaven. In other words, what's in your yeast? And so I, I just want to declare that, that we, we start waking up to what we've allowed into our yeast. What's affecting you? And so um, I don't know about you, but I love sourdough bread. Amen. A good sourdough, a little toasted, some honey, some cheese, lots of butter. Amen. 
But how many of you know, you've got to know how much leaven, how much yeast to put in the bread? Because there's a little bit of a fermentation process that takes place. And you've got to wait for the complete process. In other words, you've got to wait for the, for the bread to rise. Amen. Before you can get it out of the oven when it's baking. And so I started to, I started to meditate on it. And when we receive Christ, and I want you to listen to this, because really this is a prophetic message. This is not a preach. This is prophetic to the church right now. You know, we always want fa fantastic, grandiose words, and that's good God speaking to His people. But I believe this is a word to go and internalize in your life what's actually going on, because by this time, we should be seeing greater miracles, signs, wonders. We should be seeing greater exploits on the earth right now in terms of where we're from. Remember over the weekend, how many of you were here over the weekend, and how many of you heard the word of the Lord? What was I speaking about? The equipped church, the mature bride. She's got to arise in the season. Amen. Jesus is not coming back for an immature adolescent. He's coming back for a glorious bride. And so when we receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior, we receive the kingdom leaven. Kingdom leaven comes on the inside. Something happens on the inside of us. New creation. Vision, mission, a godly process starts to happen. We go from just newborn babes to disciples to sons to leaders. Amen. Come on. Right now, there's a lot of sons and daughters, but we don't see people actually become leaders. Amen. Come on. The church is stuck. We're stuck in second gear. We haven't given people their flight. We haven't given people their wings and saying, you go into all the world. And so let's go to Matthew 13, and let me just read something to you, uh, Matthew 13, 33, and he's speaking about the different parables here, and he's speaking about the seed, and then it says in 33, it says, he told them another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, and in my Bible, I'm reading out of the Amplified, it's the, the classic Amplified Bible, and it's so funny because in my Bible it says the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, sourdough. That's what it says. Sourdough. Which a woman took and covered over in three measures of meal or flour till all, that it, all it was leavened. And so when I look at that, I realize that we are in a season where we've got to really make sure... What type of leaven is on the inside of us? Because how many of you know that leaven affects the whole batch? Come on. We'll just wait for the, for the troops. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I know it's so weird when you come in late. But you're not late. You're just right on time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm speaking about the fact that in this hour that we're living in, one of the most crucial things that you can do in this season is you've got to check your leaven. You've got to find out what's going on on the inside. Because when we look at these scriptures and the kingdom of heaven is like leaven and you and I have received the kingdom of heaven... Every word, every experience, every encounter with God should be like a little leaven is being released into you. Amen. Come on. How many of you realize that your mouth can actually give you away? Let me say that again. Your mouth can actually give away what's in your heart. What, 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 what does the word say? Out of the abundance of your Heart. Let me just say it like this. Out of the abundance of your leaven, your mouth speaks. So whatever's been processed on the inside here is going to come out of your mouth. You can look smart. You can look sweet. You can have a fish stick on the backside of your car. But when you open your mouth, it's actually going to give away what, what stage or what process of God is happening on the inside of you. What level of anointing or faith is actually really happening on the inside of you? And when I look at the nations and I look at Australia and I look at all the things that are taking place, what this nation needs, it needs some sourdough. Yeah. Wow. It needs some leaven. Yeah. It needs some kingdom leaven to be placed 
into some of the areas that we see going astray. My heart broke yesterday when I watched Sydney being ravished by perversion. And no leader, no leader of any denomination got up and condemned that. Not one. That tells me that something somewhere along the line, the leaven of the world has started to fall into the church. And we are now starting to embrace wokeness. We are now starting to say it doesn't matter how people live. Yes, it does. And you've got to become more awake than the wokeness happening. We've, endured, we've allowed leaven to fall into what we are as righteous, holy people. You are a holy people. You've been set aside. You've been separated from the world. That should never have happened. And if it did happen, surely there should have been some voices or a whole stack of voices that rose up and said, that may happen. You financed it. Your government financed that. But we are saying it's wrong. At least there should have been a voice at some level. But there wasn't. And what that actually says was, is this, is that we've allowed all, sort of, all sorts of ungodly leaven into this nation, and we don't care anymore. That's heartbreaking. In Canada this last week, they passed a bill where young men, young teenagers, teenagers and young children can now be euthanized. What's that word? Euthanized by the doctor without parental consent. <laughs> where are we going? And yet the church, we should be the people of tremendous power and authority. We should be raising the standard. We should be the, we should be the ones that have the answers. We should be the ones walking in all authority. We should be the ones, I mean, come on, where are the prophets? Why aren't the prophets rising up at least in this nation and saying, no, that's wrong? Do you hear where I'm coming from? And so we've, we've got to, and listen, we've got to allow the kingdom leaven in us until it brings a maturity. Come on, guys. We've got to allow that. God, listen to me. God wants to move in, in, in your life. The leaven of the gospel has to be released on the nation. This gospel must be preached. And for some reason, it's like we're in this amazing time. And I'm telling you, you know, when I see what's happening, you know, uh, five minutes on the Grammys, they singing to the devil. They had a guy dressed up like Satan. They had all these demons that were singing. And then on top of it, some of the people that I've been listening to in terms of Christian music actually started singing with them. And afterwards, when they were interviewed, they said, well, it's time for the church to be polite. That's something's wrong with 11. Something's wrong. And so I'm just asking you this, morning, to this afternoon, what is in your leaven? You've got to go back and find out what's happening in terms of what you're producing and why you're producing the stuff you're producing. Why aren't we seeing great radical changes in a nation that is so free? You can do, I mean, this nation is so free. You can do anything you want in terms of the church. Hello? This is not a communist nation. This is a first world nation. And we've got the most amazing prophetic stuff that's been released over this nation. When I lived here for 12 years, the prophetic stuff that was going on, the supernatural stuff that was going on. And I'm telling you, it's like, come on, guys. There's like this, this smoldering ember that's your nation and needs people to be something. The wind of God needs to come across this nation because this ember is about to burst into flames. Amen. Come on. How many of you are sensing that? Let's go to 1 Corinthians. And I'm not trying to put a heavy on you, but we've got to stay clear of a seeker-friendly wokeness that wants to come into the church. Where we're not dealing with stuff and we're just so interested in getting a word and getting blessed and getting this and getting that. Where we're not, real, we're not taking responsibility in becoming the stewards of our nation. We've got a steward. We've got a steward holiness. You've got a steward righteousness. You've got to steward the, the anointing. You've got to become stewards. God says, I've given you this nation to steward, to shepherd, to oversee. Amen? Come on. 
So 1 Corinthians chapter 5, let me just read a couple of verses. And remember, I'm not putting a heavy on you, but I want to ignite faith and vision in you again so that you could get back to your first love and say, God, I'm, I'm asking you that in the next couple of months of my life that I would not lose my first love, that I wouldn't lose my passion, that I wouldn't lose my insight, that I would take up the assignment that's been given to me in the season so that I can run well. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So what's in your leaven? You've got to write that down and say, okay, I need to go back to base camp and start asking these hard questions. Am I, listen to me, the kingdom of heaven is not a roller coaster. We don't get on the roller coaster and just go around with the roller coaster until the end. We don't just get on the merry-go-round of theology and just say, well, we're just going to just sit here until the end comes. No, you've got to get off the roller coaster of life and get in the battlefield and start to draw the sword against the enemy. And not have this lackadaisical passive attitude that everything's fine, mate. No worries, mate. Those days are over. You've got to get in the battle. Amen? Because I'm going to tell you, there's a fierce battle going on. Two kingdoms are colliding, and brother, you've got to find out which kingdom you are of. Amen? Even Jesus had to rebuke the disciples. When they said, well, should we go and, uh, you know, should we go and lay hands or rebuke or whatever they did? And Jesus said, you don't know which kingdom you're of. There's too much, there's too much, um, there's, there's too much mixture there. Jesus said that to the disciples. And I just, I really feel that it's time. So 1 Corinthians, I'm going to read just a couple of scriptures here. It is actually reported that there is sexually, sexual immorality among you, impurity of a sort. Now, this doesn't, uh, um, this doesn't apply to you. But I'm just reading this so that you can get the whole context of what I'm saying. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, impurity of a sort that is condemned and does not occur even among the heathen. For a man has his own father's wife, and you are proud and arrogant, and you ought rather to mourn, to bow in sorrow and in shame until the person who has done this thing is removed from your fellowship and your midst. As for my attitude, though I am absent from you in body, I am present in spirit, and I've already decided and passed judgment as if actually present. In the name of the Lord Jesus. See, that's an apostle. That's what apostles do. Apostles bring forth. Apostles reveal. Amen. Come on. And there is a revealing happening on the earth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, on the man who has committed such a deed, when, uh, when, you and, when you and my own spirit are met together with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are to deliver this man over to Satan for physical discipline to destroy carnal lust and prompted him to incest. And his spirit may yet be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Now listen, 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 listen. It says, and the condition of the church, your boasting is not good indeed. It is most unseemly and entirely out of place. Do you not know that just a little leaven, just a little leaven, but not a lot of leaven, just a little leaven will ferment the whole lump. Purge out the old leaven. And I believe that's a prophetic word to Australia. You've got to start purging out of the old, you've got to get rid of the old leaven that has actually come to ferment the whole lump. Amen? Come on. So when I look at these scriptures, we have to stop tolerating sin in our midst and sweep it under the rug. And this is what we say. This is what we say. Oh, well, you know, I don't care about how that guy lives. I don't care who he loves. Yes, you've got to start caring. Because what will happen is you'll start seeing the stuff, and it's already happening. The leaven of, of whatever is going on, all the wokeness, all the stuff out there, all the perversion, that leaven is starting to drip into your schools. It's starting to drip into the universities. It's starting to come into homes. It's starting to come into churches. Men of God won't take, deal with it anymore because they don't know how to deal with it. We become soft on sin. We become soft on all sorts of things. Right now, your youth crime, the crime amongst your youth in this nation is 90% far higher than I ever thought it would be. 90%. That's like, wow, how did, that, how did we get there? I'll tell you how we got there. We got soft on crime. Amen. So somebody needs to start to do something really quick. Because I read an article today in the newspaper that said, well, you know what? Uh, we don't want um, um, homeowners to over overreact if your house is invaded. <laughs> it's like, 
Who wrote that? <laughs> Come on. I mean, where's, where's the common sense? No, it's not even the media. It's, your, it's government policy. What's happening with that sourdough loaf? <laughs> it's going down the tube. And so what's in your leaven? What's in your heart? What's actually taken place in your heart that you've had a change of heart, a change of faith, a change of vision, a change of mind, a change of passion? Suddenly we've changed our heart. Who's influencing you? Who's speaking into your life? Where are you getting your stuff from? Who is influencing by what's in their leaven? You've got to be alert and make sure that it doesn't get into your leaven. You've got to become so strong in the season because let me tell you, a little leaven... A little lie, a little deceit, a little gossip, a little disunity, a little offense. Amen? Just a little bit. And what happens is we start hearing this stuff more and more, more continuously, more, more, it just, there's more lie, there's more deceit, and it just, it just carries on. It's like a wave. It just keeps on breaking and breaking and breaking. And the next thing we can't discern because we've allowed that into our leaven. My daughter grew up in a Christian home, went to an amazing Christian school in Toowoomba. We took her out of the school when we left. We went to America. We took her, we put her in a fantastic school. And after a few months, she came home and she said, I need to speak to you because my teacher said that um, homosexuality is cool because people are born that way. And I, we sat down and I said, um, what's happening here is I'm not going to allow that leaven into this loaf. Yeah. So we educated her and said, you've got to be sure you're not allowing that. You can't even filter that. You have to stop it at the gate. And what has happened is we are, listen to me, Australia has a prophetic legacy on it. It has an apostolic legacy written into the fiber and the DNA of your nation. The propheticness of this nation is absolutely phenomenal. But if you continue down the track of just saying, oh, everything is okay, sarah, sarah, whatever will be, will be, I'm telling you, you will pay the price. You've got to rise up now. You've got to go and do some, you've got to go back into the bakery of your life and find out what's happening in the kitchen. Amen. Your sons and daughters need to be educated. The young men in this, in this nation, the young women in this nation are so confused. They don't know what's going on. They don't know how to um, respond. They don't know how to react. They don't know how to, what, what do we speak into? A lot of them don't even have a worldview, a biblical worldview. Why? Because they've so unindated by what's happening in the schools. So what's in your leaven? What's going on in your heart? And so these are the things. And sometimes we just have to take some time out. Time out, time out, time out. And we've got to sit down and say, okay, God, we've got to start to bring back the righteousness of God. Bring back the fact that we are actually a spiritual people. We're a holy people. Amen. Come on. You can see the church denominations around the world. The Anglican church, there's been a massive split right now in the Anglican church because one part of the Anglican church said, no, we are not going to embrace homosexual marriages. And everybody's up in arms like it's a big surprise. <gasps> no. The Methodist church in America is dead. I wonder what John Wesley would have said if he was alive. Great moves of God have died because men have allowed this stuff in the leaven of has come in and has spoiled the loaf. I don't go to Coles and say, hey, let's go and buy a bag of oranges with some rotten ones in it. I don't go to a restaurant and say, hey, by the way, can you give me some really rotten fish? Give me all the rotten food in your fridge. I'll eat it. You wouldn't do that. But how come we allow that stuff into the church and into our society and into marriages and into all sorts of things? How come we just turn a blind eye and we say, it's okay, as long as it doesn't affect me? Well, guess what? It is going to affect you. Don't think that you are immune to what's happening on the earth. Amen? Come on. The decisions you make today will be decisions, will be, will be a blessing to you in the future. Whatever you, the decision you make today is going to affect you for eternity. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage some of you men sitting here, some of you leaders that are sitting here, you've got to start speaking up. Yeah. 
You've got to start giving a voice to righteousness. You've got to start giving a voice to the kingdom. Amen. Come on, stop just trying to prophesy here. You need to start prophesying out there. Get onto television. Buy some time on television. Not on Christian television. Get onto some secular television program and start to prophesy. Get onto radio. Buy some place on radio. There's all sorts of radio stations. And start to, and, and, and I'm amazed. I haven't seen any Christian television since I've been here. Does it still exist? Yeah. Where? Not on, not on my, the channels I've seen. They, they switched their names. And so we've got to start thinking about this stuff. Is this okay, guys? Yeah. Somebody said to me, what's the word for Australia? This is the word for Australia. God wants the leaven over this nation to be pure. Yes. Amen. Come on. Yes. In this day and age, be very careful who you allow to teach you. How many of you have heard of, I said it yesterday, how many of you have heard of Morris Cirillo? I mean, Morris, Ma Mario, uh, what's his name? Mario Murillo. Mario Murillo. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not very good with names. You can ask Rob. I called somebody um, Chicken Tantari the other day. It was crazy. You remember that? What was his real name? What was his real name? Tari Tentari. Tari Tentari. God bless him. I called him Chicken Tandoori. Man, we laughed for about a week. So Mario Murillo is dealing with current, current day, modern day false prophets. And these people are on national television, on all sorts of Christian programs that you and I have listened to. And he's dealing with them. He's calling them out. Because the leaven they carry is infiltrating the church with all sorts of weirdness about heaven. Yeah. That heaven's got all these fountains of chocolate and there's jello pools and you can jump into a Mars bar pool and you can slide into a jello swim pool and there's flowers with pancakes and chocnuck sundaes and all that type of stuff. It sounds like Dr. Zeus. Yeah. And he got up on, the, on, the, on television and said, hey, stop. And you see what happens. We sit there and think, that must be spiritual because that guy is spiritual and we honor him and he's, he's, a, he's a forerunner in the nation. And then in the meantime, it's a lot of nonsense. You've got to start listening. Who's speaking into your life? Because I can tell you right now, there's prophecies a dime a dozen. You've got to start to discern who's prophesying into your life. Where are you getting your stuff from? Whose book you're reading? Who's whatever you're doing, you've got to start to listen and say, okay, God, what is this actually going to do to what I am as a man or woman of God? Is this going to upset the leaven of my heart? Because let me read this in Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 7 to 10. Are you guys okay? You happy? You've got to start to do some leaven check. What's happening? What's going on here? Amen. Come on. What's in my leaven? What am I producing? What am I actually representing? Who am I presenting? And so it says here in verse 7, it says, You were running the race nobly. You were running the race, the race nobly. Who has interfered in, hindered and stopped you from heeding and following the truth? This evil persuasion is not from him who called you, who invited you to freedom in Christ Jesus. Verse 9, a little leaven, a little leaven, a slight inclination to error or, a fa or false teachers le leavens the whole lump. It perverts the whole conception of faith, almost leads the whole church. Come on, man. For my part, I have confidence towards you. This is an amazing word of grace right here. I have confidence towards you in the Lord that you will take no contrary, contrary view of the matter, but will, will come to think with me. But he who is unsettling you, whoever he is, will have to bear the penalty. In other words, a little leaven. Well, Pastor David, they told me that I don't have to live by faith. They told me that I don't have to pray. They told me this. They told me that. We don't have to really trust this. We don't have to do this. We don't have to take communion. Somebody came to me the other day and said, you don't have to take communion anymore because Jesus has already come. <laughs> it's like, really? I must be stone deaf because I never heard no trumpets. 
This is what the guy said. He said, this is heaven. Jesus has already come. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to take communion. This is heaven. Jesus is here. This is the kingdom. It's like, whoa. And this guy's teaching it everywhere. Then we had another guy that was teaching that, that Adam in the garden was a spirit. He wasn't in his bodily form. He was a spirit. And then he was say, he actually was born again. Adam got born again in the garden. I just, it's like, whoa. And people are flocking. Can't discern anything. You've got to start to discern where you're getting your stuff from. Stop allowing any legalistic teaching in. Amen? We can't go back to legalism. We can't go back to the law. We can't go back to things that contradict the kingdom. Amen? Come on. You've got to start to ask God, who is perverting your faith? Little leaven. The whole lump in Galatians 5.9 refers to the entire batch. How, do, how come 900, or I don't know what the exact figure is, let's say 800 people. How come 800 people followed some guy from America to Mexico and drank Kool-Aid? How does that happen? If it was five people, I'd say, yeah, that's just all crazy. They're lunatics. But, but 800? 800 people deceived? Waco, Texas. Oh, Waco, Waco, Texas. The guy takes a lot of, puts, puts them in a compound, perverts them, and then, and then they all get killed. How does that happen? How does a man that first started as a born-again, spiritful man get perverted and lead everybody else into perversion? Because no one's discerning it. We're all like sheep led astray. You've got to start to rise up and start to say, God, I want to start to check my leaven. What's going on in my leaven? Do you, do you see the danger here, guys? Do you, do you sense something that it's like God saying, okay, wake up, fan the flames of your life, fan that don't just get become so familiar with the goodness of God, don't become, you know, familiar with, with just all the goodness, you know, like I said over the weekend, and I'm not going to apologize what I said, some of you don't need a sozo, some of you just need to go to the mission field. Amen. We've, we've, we've raised this baby looking this church that just wants to wear diapers, gets burped, gets sugar water, gets everything gets done. No, you don't need another sozo, honey. You need to go to the mission field. You need to go and do some battle. You need to get on the rock face. You need to go into areas where you've never been before so that your faith is tested. Our faith is not tested in Australia. And this is such an awesome country. And I'm so proud to be an Australian citizen. I'm so happy when the Australians win anything. They haven't done that for a while, but I'm still happy. Amen? Come on, be, start to rise up and say, hey, this is my nation too. This is our nation. One nation under God. We're going to start to protect the legacy of the kingdom of heaven in our nation. We're going to become apostolic. We're going to start to speak the word with clarity and with power and with boldness. And we're going to start to reestablish the foundation, cornerstones of this nation. Come on. There is a sound coming out of heaven. And we've got to start to rise up and say, that's it. I'm going to draw a line in the sand. Every time I watch the 700 horsemen, was it 700? 800? 900? We're going for seven? 800? Okay. 800 horsemen. When I watch that movie, I weep. I sob. I weep because that's the spirit that we need back in the church. And their victory over that moment brought Israel into her statehood. Where are the 700 light horsemen? Or the 800? Where are you? Where are you, you mighty men of God? Where are you? Amen? Where are you, you 300 vicious things? I know that movie's a little controversial, but maybe we should go and watch it. The 300. And say, God, I want that type of tenacity on my life. I want to become tenacious in terms of what we're dealing with. Amen? Come on. Our young people, just, they just, they're living. They're breathing. They just get up in the morning and there's no functionality. 
Have you watched that in your sporting arena? Something's happened. I want to, I want to ask you with all the, the fiber and the boldness of my heart to get back to your first love. Get back to that place where you're so full and so com- you're so consumed with God again. Do you think David was consumed? Why do you think the lad was consumed? Because he spent time with God on the mountain looking after sheep. He was playing and worshiping and worshiping and worshiping and worshiping. And so when he came off the mountain and he saw the Philistine there, he realized that his speech, the Philistine speech, had become leaven and had indoctrinated the heart of the army of Israel. And he had to come into that valley and he had to break the cycle of the voice of the Philistine that continuously came out over the people of the army of God. And praise God, David didn't have any ungodly leaven in his life. But he was, cons- he was consumed with God. And we are in a season where you, beca- you need to become prophetically consumed. So consumed with God that nothing else gets your attention. That you won't veer to the left or to the right, but you'll keep on running straight ahead. And you'll become the warfare instrument of God in Jesus' name. And let me tell you right now, let me tell you what I've learned. People respect more the church where we become a people of, of, of integrity. And our word is yes and amen. And you know what happens then? The grace then that we then have becomes a grace that actually means something. The mercy we carry in the midst of, 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 of persecution, that mercy becomes more Christ-like. Our love becomes more integrous than just being flimsy and, and passive and, and flopping around and just, well, we were seek a friendly church. Whatever that means, your mercy doesn't mean anything anymore. Don't you want your mercy to be seen as treasure? That your love has actually been, been it's, it's treasure. Your grace is treasure because we actually stand for something. That everything that comes out of your mouth is integrous. There's nothing more pathetic than sloppy agape. Sloppy grace. Sloppy mercy. Sloppy love. Why don't you let your love count for something? And people actually say, you know what? The church is believable. And they see the integrity of your hearts because the leaven is pure. And that's what I'm talking about. And so one more scripture. So whatever's in you, whatever's in your life that is affecting your leaven and your relationship with the Lord, you know where it's going to shine through? The way you love. Your love is going to be everything about the way you love, the way you mercy, the way you grace, the way you embrace people is going to be affected by what's in your leaven. Amen? Amen. The integrity of your heart is at stake. And you've got to rise up and become believable. Let me show you something in Matthew 16. Matthew Matthew 16. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Hallelujah. We've been seeing the most amazing, ridiculous, miracles in the last week i was in a church let me just share this this is so amazing the pastor and his wife drove all the way from um, from deception bay i just don't like that bay let's just change it to something else (laughs) deceptive bay give me a break amen why don't we just call it the bay of jesus but anyway they drove all the way from deception bay And they said, we've got to see you. They drove all the way here, saw me in the hotel yesterday and said, we've got to just share with you what happened over the the last weekend. There was a lady there and her husband, they came up for prayer. It was Sunday night. And I said to her, in the next next 24 hours, you're going to fall pregnant. And she's like, her eyes are this big. And she started to weep. Now listen to what happened. I don't understand this. Maybe you ladies do. I don't. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a biologist. I I just speak the word of the Lord. So she went and she had a pregnancy test done on Wednesday. Negative. Then she had one done on Thursday. Negative. Then she had one done on Friday. Negative. Now after Friday, I would have like, okay, we, we get the picture. She went one and got one on Saturday. 
On Sunday morning, say Sunday morning. Negative. Monday morning, positive. That's God. And this is what the Lord said to me. And I want you to write this down. He said this. He said, I'm going to release over Australia in this season the most ridiculous, impossible, supernatural miracles so that I will attract the unbeliever back in the house. And some of you sitting here are going to start moving in supernatural, unprecedented, that's never been heard of miracles. That's what's going to start to happen. Amen. Amen. I was in South Africa last, uh, when was I? In, last year, September, October, I'm in South Africa. This couple come to me just weeping and weeping and weeping. And I, I just started praying. The Lord said, lay hands on her stomach. So I got her husband's hand, laid it on her stomach and prayed and said, in nine months, you will fall pregnant. You'll have a child. It will be a full-term child. And so they just start breaking down and sobbing. And so the pastor calls me in his office and he says, you don't understand. She's lost every child she's had. The doctors have said there's no possibility in, on the earth that they'll ever be pregnant. I've got a message this week that she's laying in a hospital bed and she's saying, Pastor David, you said in nine months I'll have a child. And yes, this baby, um, it must have been July because it's nine months, so nine months back. And she says, welcome. I just want to say to you, Lucas came into the world and she's holding this little baby in the hospital bed. Some of you are going to start to see miracles. Miracles. Open heaven. You have, you've given yourself a prophetic word. There's a mandate on this church to bring an usher in miracles. There's a, there's a mandate over you to change school curriculums, to change governmental legislation. That's what's on this church. And some of you, I'm going to tell you, Rob, Rob Stuttle, my dear friend, I'm telling you again, brother, there is a governmental authority on you, and God's going to start to show you how to go into that, navigate into that whole system. God's going to show you. It's not going to be a time of striving and sweating and feeling overwhelmed. I'm telling you, God is going to show you great favor with people in this nation that are in government, and you're going to be seated in a governmental position, and you're going to rewrite some things, and you're going to call some things out. I'm telling you, it's on your life. You've carried it for a long time. And the Lord said, the reason why I'm going to use you in the whole realm of government is you're a protector. You've carried the protection anointing. You are a protector. You're not a nurturer. You're a protector. And you, you've just so long, I've watched you protect things. I've, I've watched you dive onto the street because two dogs were fighting. He dove onto a dog and, and, and skinned his whole body because he wanted to protect somebody that's, that, whose dog was being mauled. I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty bold. God says, no, he's a protector. And so some of you are going to see some transitional things happening in your life. You're going to start seeing things change quickly as you've waited upon the Lord. You're going to start seeing doors close and doors open. You're going to start seeing things happen in the heavenly realm. God's going to follow you around, and you're going to hear the voice behind you that says, this is the way, walk in it. And you're going to change, literally, you're going to change um, um, families, and you're going to change all sorts of legacies and cultures, and all sorts of things are going to start to take place around you so much so that people will say we have to follow them into this area of their life because they're so blessed because God says I'm producing a Goshen over you but you've got to go and check what's happening in the in the in the inmost parts of your heart so that you can get rid of all the little stuff all the little stuff that's come in the leaven that's come in and try to spoil the other day I was walking and I just I don't know how much time I have but I was just walking and the Lord spoke to me, he said, he said to me, this, just like this, he said, there are too many foxes playing in the vineyard of my house. Too many foxes, there are too many little foxes playing in the vineyard of my house. Just like that, I was like, whoa, what does that mean, God? He said, we've allowed, you've allowed too many foxes in, and as the little foxes have been playing in the vineyard, they've been breaking off the blossoms. That's why the vineyard has not been able to produce the wine it was meant to produce. And then the Lord spoke another word. He said, and Samson, listen, the church has become like a Samson that actually used the little foxes to destroy the enemy's field 
but he couldn't discern his own foxes. <laughs> that could preach, man. You've got to start to discern the foxes in your vineyard. You've got to find out what's happening in my vineyard. These little foxes need to go. These things that we've allowed in that are breaking the grapes off, we don't know what it is. We just don't find the traction. The vineyard has been around. We've been in the vineyard. Jason, we've been in the vineyard, brother. We've been in the vineyard. We're working in the vineyard. We're doing all the stuff we want to do in the vineyard, but the vineyard never produces the wine. Have you ever thought about that? The church is at the altar every Sunday. We've got the best worship in the world, but there's no revival. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about why, why, why? What is it? What is it out of all the nations in the world? What is it? I know that there's been revivals in the top end. In Cape York, there's been revivals. What about, what about this place? What about Rubina? <laughs> what about Brisbane? What about Gold Coast? What about New South Wales? What about Perth? What about Adelaide? What about all these different places? Amen. You, you're, not a, you're not a coward nation. You're not a goat nation. You're a sheep nation. When you go back into every world war and you look, I stood in, in a place called Looper, a Looper in Belgium. I stood there looking at the Australian memorial and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed at the courage and the bravery of the Australian soldiers they couldn't even find after the war. And everywhere you go around Europe, there are cemeteries of Australian soldiers that died, that laid down their lives. I didn't see anything on any of those headstones that said, this man was a coward. So you have a legacy. You've got, you've got blood in the soil of nations. You've got to start to change the way you think. You've got a stake globally around the world. Every man that fell in the nation, that you have a stake in that nation. We've got to get it right. And so here in Matthew 16, it just says, when the disciples reached the other side of the sea, this is Matthew 16, verse, verse 5. When the disciples reached the other side of the sea, they found that they had forgotten to bring any bread. Now listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says to them, be careful and on your guard. Against the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And these disciples can't even discern what he said. Because it says there, it says, and they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we did not bring any bread. But Jesus, aware of this, asked them, Why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? O oh, you men, how little trust you have in me and how little faith you have to understand what I've just said about be on your God. And I'm telling you, this is the prophetic word for you, other than what I've said. Be on your God. Some of you are allowing stuff in, and you're going to battle to get it out. Amen. Offense, racism, anger, pride, all that stuff is leaven. And the more leaven you get in, it's going to spoil your bread. It's going to spoil the sourdough. You've got to say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not allowing whispers to come in. I'm not allowing the leaven of the Pharisee and the Sadducee to come in. We're not going back to legalism. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let me tell you what's going to happen in Australia. There is going to be a movement called the Deborah Movement. Yes. I'm telling you. The Deborah Movement is arising. You know what that means? There is going to be a movement of women in this nation that will once again um, um, restore, restore the legislative authority of warfare over this nation. I'm telling you, you're going to go and watch. You can mark my words. You're going to start hearing about it. Deborah's arise. There's going to be a whole movement of David's. Arise. Men of warfare that will know how to worship their God. 
And we're going to see the tabernacle of David restored before Jesus comes back. So there's a whole shift coming. Shift. I said shift. In case you didn't hear that, right? I've got a, I've got a friend in the audience that knows that sometimes I get it wrong. Thank you, Jesus. So let's just wait on the Lord. Father God, we thank you. You've got to start writing down. God, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, that the, that the, that the, the leaven of my heart is, Lord, I want to put it through the purity filter. God, take out all the impurities. God, we want to build well. We're going to speak well. God, we're going to pray well. We're going to prophesy well. God, we're going to live so well that the heathen, the unbeliever will run back to find this place of peace, that the prodigal sons and the daughters of this nation would come back. Lord, that we would come with such clarity of integrity and economic strength and power and vitality that they will stand in awe at the glory and the power that will be so evident on the bride. Amen. Come on. That we'll not just be the disdain of the earth, that we'll not just be the black sheep, that we won't just be, you know, well, the, the, the church, a bunch of absolute lunatics. No, they will say they have the ability. You'll be the solutionists. I'm telling you, there's some of you sitting here that will carry solutions. Jason, you and your wife, God's coming, bringing you into a place where you're going to start operating in this level of solution. God says, I'm going to give you solutions, 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 and results. People will know you as a solutionist. When everything else is looking crazy, God says, I'll give you the answer. There's some of you prophetic people here. God's going to start giving you the answer. God's going to start to speak to you and say, I'm going to start to give you strategies. And I'm going to start showing you navigational things. And you're going to help people navigate through this whole minefield of what's happening culturally in your nation. But you, sh you will arise in this season. And I see a movement that's going to come out of your life in this season. What is your name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Whoa. You've been sitting on some eggs for a long time, and you're about to incubate that stuff. You're about to see those things come alive around you and in you and on you. And you're going to start to realize that's why you felt many times frustrated. You felt, that's it, God. I don't know what to do with all this frustration and almost times of irritation that's come on your life. But God says in 2023, I'm going to open the doors and you're going to be able to give expression to what you've been feeling. It's like you're going to name the baby because the baby you've been carrying needs a name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This lady, this, I don't know who this is for, for this table. I think it's for the lady in the black there. I feel the Lord saying it's, a, it's time for you to arise and shine. It's time to, for you to arise out of the place of the valley of the shadow of death. It's time for you to arise out of the dry bones that you've been hanging around. God says, I'm going to start giving you words that you'll speak over the dry bones of your family, over the dry bones of the past, of everything that's just become another dry bone. God says, no, this is going to be, the, the, this is going to be a season of dry bones that's going to come alive. Yes. Amen. Come on. Some of you have been just been camping around the dry bones. Well, it's just, I'm so happy. I listen to me. I, when I eat soup, I don't like bony soup. Come on. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. That lady sitting there. Yes, just receive it. Arise, shine. What's your name? Arise, shine. Arise, shine. For the glory of the Lord has come upon you. And people are going to say to you, what happened to you? We don't know what happened because in the last couple of months, something, you, you know, it's like it's all hell's broken loose. And God says today, I'm going to deliver you out of the pit and out of the, the snare of the fowler. And you're going to come into a season of supernatural breakthrough in Jesus' name. Come on, but you've got to put it in your, in your mouth. You've got to get, become violently involved in Jesus' name. The kingdom of heaven suffers and the, and, the, and the violence take it by force. I don't see anything peace in there. I don't see the word polite. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You've been, stra you've been pressing in with God. What's your name? Lynn, 
It's all over you right now. You've been pressing in with God. And sometimes you can't give language to what you feel. But there's a stirring on the inside of you. And I really feel the Lord is saying to you, it's time to declare war on the enemy. In your family, in your situation, in your finances, it's time to say, that's it, God. I'm going to summon all of heaven to take control of that situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Start to become a little bit more uh, bold in that, in that um, declaration. God, I declare, uh, declare over this season. I'm not going to allow the leaven of whatever's going on to destroy my family, to destroy my legacy, to destroy my inheritance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. I just feel that. I just feel you've been pressing in. It's like you've been getting close to the fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your word on your t-shirt spells it out. Narrow path. Everybody wants the broad path. Everybody wants the cool path. Everybody wants the easy path. But the Lord says, the path to me is narrow. And I'm telling you, we've got to start to wake up and realize that not everybody that says, God, God, Jesus, Jesus. And so we've got to start to hear the word of the Lord. So, Father, we just thank you. I just I want to be really sensitive to the spirit this morning this afternoon. Father, we thank you. We thank you. That lady sitting right at the back there. I've seen, watched you the whole weekend. You are coming alive in Jesus name. You are coming alive in Jesus name. You are coming alive in the name of Jesus. You are coming alive. You are coming into a place of healing and restoration at a cellular level. In the name of Jesus, we break and cut off every spirit of infirmity, every lying spirit, every destructive spirit, everything that's trying to take you out and cause you to think that there's no hope. God says today, I am your hope. I am your strength. I am your healing. I am your deliverer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. This lady sitting here at this table, you are so wanting to be married. Do you know that I gave a lady a word last year about being married all the time I was here? I can't even remember when it was. I was praying for somebody in your meeting. And as I walked away, I said, oh, by the way, do you need a husband? Do you want a husband? She says, I want a husband. Guess what? I, I, she's sitting right there. Is that right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. I prophesied and said, God's going to give you a Boaz. No, I don't know if God gave you a Boaz or a Moses, but you're married. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, you've been crying out to God. What's your name? For a, for a husband, is that correct? And God says, I'm going to give you a husband, a man that knows how to worship, a man that knows. And I'm very concerned. Listen to me. I don't just prophesy marriages and stuff. But I'm telling you, it's about your legacy and your future. And you have been pining for a husband. And God says, I'm going to give you a husband. I'm going to give you somebody that's going to take you into your destiny and to your purpose and to your future. Because all these beautiful giftings have been, been dormant in your life. And it's like it's been dormant so long. And God says, this man is going to literally come and, and, and cause those, that dormancy to come to life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This lady with the green. Let me tell you something. What's your name? Karen, get back on the wall. Get back on the wall. Start to pray. There's a Nehemiah anointing on you. And God says, I want you to get back. Get back. Start to call those things that are not as if they are. You've got to get stirred up again in your faith. You've got to get stirred up again in your vision. You're going to get stirred up in that apostolic prophetic thing uh, that you carry as an intercessor. Come on. You've got to stir it up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's like the enemy's trying to just drag you down and drag you down and drag you down and make you feel that you're incomplete. And nobody's going to listen to you. And God says, no, I'm going to give you buoyancy. And I see you, see you shooting out of the water. In Jesus' name. Come on. Receive that. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you to be bold. Now, I want every head bowed right now. I want you to be bold. Every head. I don't want anybody looking at me. If you've been listening to me today and you know that you know that you have leaven in there that needs to go, I want you to stand up publicly. If you've got a little bit of leaven there and you know there's a little bit of residue, you've got to stand up.
And let's make a, a, a public declaration today. I want you to put your hand on your heart. And I want us to pray this together. Lord Jesus, we come with great repentance. Lord, I repent for holding on, for allowing this little bit of residue to land on my heart. Lord, today by faith, I release it back to you. And I receive the leaven of the kingdom of heaven. This moment in time. For me to fulfill my destiny. To walk in my assignment. And to see your kingdom come. I need your leaven. So Father, today, I'm so thankful for the leaven of the kingdom. Thank you that you've washed me, that you've cleansed me, that you've separated me, that I'm your chosen vessel for such a time as this. And I will not squander the anointing, the gifting, and the calling of my life any longer. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand. Okay, so now I'd like you to do this. Would you like to do the communion? Yeah. Yes, I'd like you to do that. Okay. Bless you. Thank you. I really um, love my time when I take communion because it's really the supper table of the Lord. And one of the things that I really enjoy in life is to sit with good friends and have a meal Amen. and just dawdle over that meal and, or that cuppa and just talk and share hearts. And, and we don't do that enough. We don't do it enough in our own family naturally. Just to sit, take the time, just dawdle linger and just share but this is the lord's supper and in church the ecclesia it's it's difficult sometimes you know like it's it's not a religious thing we do it because it's covenant amen and as we take this we are stepping we are saying to god i accept the covenant that i have with you and i understand that in that covenant you've given me everything for life, for godliness, you've given me every single thing. And I give you all of me. Covenant. I give you everything. Thank you. I just want to encourage you that this is a season where first love's got to come back. This is a season where boldness has got to be. I love the phrase, which I wrote it down, I circled it. Um, violently involved. I love that. But when you take communion at home, I just want to encourage you to linger yes. at the Lord's supper table. Yes. Listen to him. Share what's on your heart. Let him share what's on his. Oh, and then come together in covenant. So as we take this, Jesus is the living bread of heaven. Bread nourishes. Pure leaven. So as we partake of the, the bread, let me just say too, you know what, at times of, of deep pain, times of betrayal, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took communion. Amen. So at those times in your lives, the first thing we do is head for the covenant supper table. But Jesus, you are the living bread of heaven. You are the living bread. And as we partake of this, we thank you that your body was the veil that was broken, that we can step into our wholeness in the, in the holy of holies. We just thank you for that. But as we partake of the bread of heaven, Amen. nourish us. Yes. Let the purity of the leaven that's in you yes. through covenant be our purity. 
as we step into this covenant meal. Let your holiness be ours. Minister to us. Minister to us. And as we partake of this, nourish us, sustain us, and let the living bread of heaven release revelation words, rhema words, as we partake. Thank you, Jesus. We're in covenant. We're in covenant. I just want to thank you for the precious blood of the Lamb, shed in seven different places, but shed for us. That, that at the very beginning, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, you sweated drops of blood because God not... Not my will, but your will be done, you said. But Father, we don't go to that extent where we cry out like that. But in covenant, we come before you right now and we say, Father God, we don't want our will. We want your will. Your will be done in our lives, not ours. We want your will. We want your way. We want your plans. We want your purposes. And so in this covenant meal and through the shed blood of the Lamb of God, we surrender everything that we think we own our own ideas, our own ideologies, our own whatever it is, our own opinions. We surrender that. We have no opinion but your word. We have no right but your righteousness. So we come before you and we thank you for the blood. And we thank you that in this precious blood, it's the life that flows through the blood. The life of Christ flows through this. And as we partake of this blood covenant, the very life of Christ flows through our body. It throws through our, flows through our physical veins, cleansing us of all sickness and disease. It renews our mind. It changes us from the inside out because the very life of Christ is released within us and so we step into this covenant right now we step into it and we say Jesus as we partake of the blood of the Lamb of God let your life be totally released through us let your life cover us let your life flow through us let your life be released in us because we were crucified with you and it's no longer us who live but you live in us so we give you free and clear expression Live through us by the power of the blood of the Lamb. We just worship you. We worship you. Just spend a little bit of time just in just praying in the heavenly. Just reflect. Thank you, Jesus. Just listen. Just listen. And Jesus, we ask that as our high priest, you would take our prayers, you would take this communion, and you would make it acceptable and present it to the Father. We ask you to step in as our High Priest. Because of covenant, for those of you in financial difficulties, Jesus, we ask you as the Lord of hosts, to step into those financial areas, to bring correction, redirection, provisioning, whatever is required. But you are the Lord of hosts. And if there is money that is being fraudulently withheld from anyone in this room, the voice of that money is crying out before God. Yes. It is crying out in the spiritual Amen. realm. And so we add our voices to the monies that is being fraudulently withheld from the body of Christ, from your people. Yes. And we declare right now that we come into agreement with that money. And we say, Father God, we ask for divine justice, that the finances would be released, redirected, and again restored back to where it should be. That the money is crying out, that they're not in the position, they're not in the place place where you've called it to be and so we speak right now through the power of the Lord of hosts let the finances come into divine order and and restoration in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I also want to encourage you because what I see in the body of Christ, which is not right, apart from passivity and things like that, sickness, disease and poverty. The sickness and disease, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So as we take communion, as you speak a blessing over your meals, you thank him that he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord, your healer. And he takes sickness and disease away from you. Every time you bless your meal, you release the covenant promise of Jehovah Rapha into your body. You are contagious with divine health. Amen. So you want to start a Goshen? Start with your own life. Start with your own life. Do you, want to, do you want to say anything else? Okay. Thank you, Lord. 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 Let the weight of your glory be the weight on our lives. And Lord God, along with the um, with the purifying of the leaven and the restoration of first love, would you bring us back to what Paul said, that he is a servant of the Lord. That we would be more concerned about doing what you want than what we think we need to get done. This is a season and this is a time right now of consecration. Amen. You can step across the line. It's almost like a line being drawn. It's a consecration. It is written in the book, I delight to do your will. Yes. I delight to do your will. So, Father God, I just pray that, Lord, you would continue to minister to each and every person that the words that they've heard of the equipped church resonates in their hearts and in their spirits. That, Father, you would not let us get away. You would not let us reason things out. You would not let us um, talk ourselves out of anything, but we would step into the fullness of everything that's been released today, that we would step into the fullness of everything that we've received over this weekend, that we would receive it, that old mindsets, old opinions, old ways of looking at things, old ways of doing things, old wineskins would be completely discarded and we would step into the new, we'd step in, we'd be uh, allow you Lord to immerse us in the oil and to rub us with the salt so that we become a new wineskin that you fill us with new wine, that this is a day of change and a day of, of movement this is a day of movement, you can no longer sit and back and just think well this is the way it is, get up and make the difference because you are the difference you are the difference Karen you are the difference. You are the difference. So let me just say one other thing. Don't you ever, ever allow the enemy to put the fear into you. Don't you ever allow him to lie to you. Don't you ever listen to his voice. Don't you give him any place. He is an out and out liar. He is only out to steal, kill and destroy. Why do you even listen to him? Shut him down. Amen. Thank you. And I do not want to hear, and I'm speaking to the people of open heaven, I do not want to hear what the enemy is doing in your life. I want to hear what the Holy Spirit's doing. Amen. Hallelujah. You come to me and tell me what God's doing, and, and the enemy will be stopped. But you come and talk about what the devil's doing, you just give him more space. Shut him down. Don't you dare tolerate one thing Amen. from the kingdom of darkness. Not one thing. 
Thank you, Father. Getting a bit of a warrior. <laughs> so, I really feel that you need to reflect. We've had a lot of impartation over this weekend. Make sure we've got your email address so that you've got access to the whole recording if you weren't here for everything. Go over it and over it so that it becomes a part of you. Amen. This is God's word in season. Amen. We steward it. Yes. We steward it. Yes. But take the time to reflect. Carve out some time this week just to sit with the Lord and say, will you talk to me about what I've heard? Will you minister to me? Will you show me what you want for me to do out of this weekend? Give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. But take the time to linger with him. Linger. One of the words I got from him last week was linger longer. He said, I love it when you linger. Give him time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you so much. So we seal our time with this blessed man of God. We thank you that you brought him to us. We seal it by the Holy Spirit, that nothing would be lost, nothing would be forgotten, nothing would be left undone. And as we seal it with the Holy Spirit, we ask for space and grace, for much fruitfulness to come forth, and much glory for God. So I bless you with an amazing week. Mobilization, activation, and you are thoroughly equipped. Amen. Go for it. Amen.